sins without shedding of blood. Okay. Okay, that is what the Bible says. Right. For that, the Jews were doing sacrifice and bringing the blood as the sacrifice blood, right? For, for the forgiveness. That ritual, Jesus said, is no longer needed because he has paid the ultimate sacrifice. Meaning the goat's blood and the cow's blood cannot forgive you can forgive sins. That was just to teach you that blood is the is the payment for sin. And I'm paying with my blood. And that is the ultimate payment of sin. That means there is nothing else that is God will accept as payment of sin except for the blood of the Holy One who's sinless, who's become sin for us, because he's taking our sins on him. That's the Christian perspective. Now comes to the Muslim perspective. Now the Muslim perspective on Qurbani is a little skewed because it's very confused because it hasn't been explained in this way or that way. That's why when I ask people, they, like our friend here was saying, it's a remembrance of Abraham's sacrifice. Okay. Okay. I said, this, what does the word Qurbani mean? It means sacrifice. Okay. So you're doing Qurbani, but why don't you just call it like Abraham's sacrifice or something like that? Qurbani you know, doesn't Qurbani? technically mean sacrifice. sacrifice. But it's used to refer to sacrifice. To but the, to the root word seems to be like karib, to it's draw close, close to, to or closer near to God. God. Which is, okay, so what and there's different types of sacrifices. From, so even in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's different types of sacrifices. So, so one is to the remembrance of Abraham, commemoration. Qurbani brings forgiveness and closeness to God. It's a means of atonement. It's so of atonement. it's a sign of atoning repentance. Atoning blood of Christ is what the Bible says. But, uh, atoning, atonement, that's the word. It's a very... Can, the, the, can, the, finish, the, can he finish the word? Well, 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 I mean that the Quran says in chapter 10, it's not the meat or the blood that reaches God, but it's your mindfulness of God. It's what God looks at. So it's not the animal itself that God wants. But it's your attention, your sincerity, having a contrite heart is what God looks at and that That's fine. Is, brings about the forgiveness. Because even it, it says um, God desires mercy and not sacrifice. Because the Jews, they turned into the, the, the whole animal sacrifice as a ritual in which the, they, their hearts and minds were not in it. They were just simply going through the motion and going through the ritual. But then they could say that So their sins were not well. being forgiven. Well, because minute, their really? heart and mind was, wasn't in it. Wait, wait, wait. They weren't but sincere. Now you're going a little bit far because that God has sanctioned that and when they did it, they did it very carefully because not any Jew could do the sacrifice. Only the high priest, after doing everything yeah. that he was supposed to do, then he could enter with the blood. He would die if he didn't do that. But in the Probably. time of Jeremiah, in the time of Amos, and even in the time of Jesus, it had just become like an empty ritual. Yeah, you so the that, heart and mind were in it, and that's why Jesus calls okay. the prophets. But, but, but then again, anybody, mm. I could just say that Muslims are just doing it, their heart is not in it. They don't yes, even so, know what they're doing. So that's First wrong. Of all, they don't even know what they're doing. So you should know think, what you're doing. You should understand what yeah, you're doing, what and for whose okay. sake you're doing yeah. it for as well. But my friend, the only thing that I wanted to just make sure that you understand from this is Qurbani is a sacrifice. The sacrifice means blood has to be shed for the forgiveness of sins. And that's what I was trying to tell you, is that Muslims don't know what they're doing on Qurbani. They don't understand it. Nobody has explained it. The Quran doesn't explain it. And that's why they have the Well, it does, but you need a deeper meaning. Like, you need to go and look for it as to why they, they, they do what they do. You can't say the Quran doesn't explain it if I've read it or I've not gone and looked he for the information. Read it. When because I, when he has read Exactly, because he's more learned. So he's looked into it. No, you are obviously. Oh, so we can learn from one another. Yeah, so, but, yeah. But, but what was his explanation when we asked him what the Qurbani is for? What was his explanation? He said it's a sacrifice, and it, but it brings it's like a oneness, a closeness to God when you do it. it so it's a sacrifice, but the deeper meaning no, the is, first, is, is a closeness. Yeah, okay. But the first time when you asked him, he said it's we follow the uh, what? what? Of remembrance Abraham, of Abraham. Abraham. Right? Abraham. Abraham. Remembrance yeah. of Abraham sacrifice. That's correct. That, now, if you ask 90% of the Muslims, 99% of them, they would give you that answer. Because I've asked a lot of Muslims. 
when you ask them, what is the sacrifice? Oh, it's the remembrance of Abraham's sacrifice. Yeah. I'm like, really? Okay. No, but Sam, you've you been a little bit. Didn't, didn't Abraham said, sacrifice a ram? If you go deeper, okay, but it still to give thanks to God. That's what I'm saying. Even if you say it brings you closer to God, it can only bring you closer to God if God forgives your sins through that sacrifice. Do you understand that? You said, oh, it brings you. He said it brings you closer to God if you're sincere and you understand that. I'm fine. But now God has to do on his part. You bring the sacrifice. He would have to. Now you're separated from God and you want to get close to God. There are some sins that you are that need to be forgiven. Now you're bringing the sacrifice for the forgiveness so that God can then again be close to you. That is what the God, whole God thing God also forgives is. sins without animal sacrifices. Uh, both in the Bible and in the Quran. The Quran speaks of repentance, whereas Jesus speaks about showing mercy to others. And even there's a, a hadith of the Prophet, in which the Prophet says, um, God will not show mercy on those who do not show mercy to others. And Jesus says, if you do not forgive the sins of your brother, uh, the Father will not also forgive you your sins. So there's also yeah. forgiveness without animal sacrifice. Right, right, right. Uh, God forgave Nineveh, for example, is when they repented to God in sackcloth and ashes. Right, right, right. No, 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 there's no, no animal sacrifice there. Right, but the whole thing in the Bible is talking about why this, why was there a animal sacrifice, anyways, in the Bible in the first place? For what? For what, 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 yeah. what was the primary? Let's be very simple. What was the primary reason for sacrifice in the Bible in the Old Testament? What was the primary reason for it? Um, it was a system to show the Jews were not perfect, so that they would obviously make mistakes. They would obviously continue to Commit sin. Sins, yes. Um, yes. And this was a means of showing their repentance to God. They communicated to God undergoing these rituals well, they could just come that they still the want to remain within the covenant yeah, that God yeah, made. Why can't they just come into the synagogue and pray to God and ask for His forgiveness? Why did they have to bring blood of an animal? These That's were, the question. So this was a form of prayer which was taught to them by, by, by the prophets of how to communicate. And who told the prophets that they have to bring the blood? Well, it will come from the Bible, but it at the same time, God, right? We can't put so much emphasis on it because even Jeremiah criticizes them by saying that add the burnt offerings and flesh to your to the uh, to the temple because God, when He brought you out of Egypt, He gave no such commandments concerning animal sacrifices or burnt offerings. So it's in Jeremiah chapter seven. Verse 21 uh, uh, to 22. You have to bring that up so we can see the context of that. Yeah, However, so the context is um, that Jeremiah says that um, you have turned the law of God into a lie uh, with the so false hands of the he's scribes. Saying there as oh, Jeremiah 8 8. Is yeah, Jeremiah 8, and also Jeremiah 8, 7, so verse he's 21. Saying to them that if you don't follow the, you know, what God's commanded and you don't understand what this is doing, you're just like you were saying, you're just going to the motions of it. You know what I mean? That's the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat the flesh. For in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, I did not speak to your fathers or command them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this command I gave them, obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people. Mm -hmm. So Jeremiah is saying that the day that God brought them out of Egypt, I did not speak to them concerning uh, sacrifice, uh, burnt offerings and sacrifices. What about Abraham's so sacrifice? So we can't put that oh, that's much. That's fine, that's fine. You, you showed me that. So Abraham's sacrifice was yeah. before God brought them out of Egypt. Yeah. So but when Abraham sacrificed his son or the willing, um, they didn't exist at that time. But, but does, does this overrule Abraham's sacrifice? Well, well this isn't the about the Abraham's sacrifice. The started from when Abraham sacrificed the ram that the God provided. Abraham's sacrifice was in response to the pagan nations. They were sacrificing their sons to the pagan gods. Yeah. So God was demonstrating that God is not like the pagan gods. Right, he doesn't he, require human sacrifice. Okay, we're not going to that story. We're going to the connection from that story to yeah. sacrifice because God provided a ram to be sacrificed. Yeah. And then the sacrificial the lamb is what came as well as a sacrifice where the Jews started sacrificing for forgiveness of sins and stuff. That is from the other text where it talks about the sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins, right? Intentional sin. So that is what 
in Judaism, it's the it is established fact that you know forgiveness of sin is through the blood of the you know, blood, and yeah. then they used to do the sacrifice of, of the goats and the lambs and everything. And God actually said that those that was not what that, that blood does not say. What it was was to demonstrate to them that because when you kill the animal, you are supposed to be killed for your sins. That is what the lesson is. That instead of you dying. The animal is killed and the blood is given as a sacrifice because God says blood is the payment of sin. That's when he accepts because it's called a scapegoat because they used to bring two goats. One was the goat they would sacrifice, one was the one that would escape in the, into the desert. But what, what I'm trying to understand, Sam, Jeremiah was before Jesus and he's saying that I did speak to your people about burnt offerings and, 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 so, sacrifice. and sacrifice. So even back before Jesus, you, you're, you're basically saying all of them, that's what it did to get closer to but God. But I just gave you that Abraham came before Jeremiah. Abraham came before, so yeah, so even after Jeremiah, he's saying that there was no talk. Of, about your That's full father. Jeremiah was an Israelite, right? Yeah. yeah. So Abraham was an Israelite, right? No. No. Okay. Well, the Israelite started from Abraham, right? Abraham. Jacob. Abraham was the father well, was of many the father nations. Of Jacob? Many people. So it started from Abraham. Abraham more than one son, so he was the father of many people. Yeah. The Ishmaelites, um, the Ebionites, the yeah. Israelites. It, it was so he couldn't have been a Jew or Israelite. Israel? Um, Abraham. Abraham. Okay. Yeah. So, who are the children of Israel? Is, uh, Ishmael. Um, the, the Ish, yeah, Ishmael had twelve sons, so that okay. included so, the, the Kedar. Because, well, I don't want to. That, that's going to just take this away from the sacrifice. I don't want to go into the Ishmael yeah, yeah. discussion because I'll. But I mean, Abraham wasn't a Jew because he was the father of the Jews as well as of the Ishmaelites and the um, Ebionites. Right, but what I'm saying is, from his sacrifice, yeah. from the the lamb that he, the the ram that God provided. Mm -hmm was a foreshadowing of the sacrifice that God was going to deliver to them. That is why they started sacrificing animals for the forgiveness of sins. I'm not making this, this is all but, throughout but, the Old But that wasn't to for forgiveness of sins, that sacrifice. It was more to show thank, thankful for God. Because okay. Abraham did like, God, like Abraham doesn't sacrifice Isaac. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they, they thank God by sacrificing a ram instead. So you're saying that um, Israelites just made up the sacrifice you know, system because this was a whole system. Not necessarily. On their own. Uh, but, or was um, it commanded by God? Well, Jeremiah says it wasn't commanded okay, by let's God. Let's say Jeremiah. But, but, um, but is there other verses that say uh, that God commanded yeah. that? In Exodus chapter 20, God does command like burnt offerings or sacrifice. So that seems to contradict what Jeremiah is saying. So I don't know how we you would reconcile read, uh, the two. To, yeah, I don't know. No, I haven't read the whole passage because okay. if you read the whole thing, I would understand why what he was referring to specifically. However, this verse is not the the main argument here. Is the main discussion that we have is about the sacrifice in Islam. Wow, that Qurbani in Islam, which is the sacrifice. And that sacrifice only has one connotation, and that's one in any religion. Sacrifice is for getting close to God through forgiveness of your sins, the blood of God. That's what it is. And that's what Muslims don't know because Islam does not specifically preach that. Islam, you might say, it might bring you closer, but to come closer to God, he has to forgive your sins. But if, even even without the Qurbani, yeah? Oh, go on, sorry. I so I'm just going to show you, um, like, you, you know, here, um, God says in Exodus chapter 20 verse 24 an altar of earth you shall make me and sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings and sheep and oxen in every place where I will cause my name to be remembered and I will come to you come to you and bless you so he's saying to um, burnt offerings uh, to make an altar for burnt offerings so this is like a commandment whereas in Jeremiah chapter 7 God is saying that I did not command you concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. Well, but there he is talking about bringing the birds at uh, 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 offering is and I will bless you. Okay. Well, it's commanded to make the, an altar the, for The thing offerings. is this, I don't want to get sidetracked because there's like the discussion of Ishmaelites mm -hmm. and there's a discussion of what God commanded. I'm just yeah. trying to prove to you one thing and one thing only. The sacrifice of Jesus was to 
stop the sacrifice of animals because that animal sacrifice was not what was pleasing to God because what was pleasing to God was what Jesus did because he took his righteousness because he was righteous sinlessness and sacrifice it for our sake that is why we are saved by his blood that is why Hitler will be you said how come Hitler will be saved I said Hitler will be saved because God is just because he did a the justice on the cross by sac you know because of his son's sacrifice that is the point so don't forget this point this whole discussion has to do with the Jesus had given the ultimate sacrifice all right and he was sinless and that what would save Hitler if he was to repent but what 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 it is with Islam yeah? and I might be and wrong. in Islam you're lacking what, that what, what what it is with Islam and, and again I might be wrong mm. is that if I couldn't provide kul kulbani, is it kulbani? Yeah, kulbani. Yeah, kulbani. If I don't have yeah, to, it, yeah. if, if I don't, if I, if I'm not doing it, I believe God can still forgive even without the bloodshed. Well, okay, then, then you have to, then, okay, uh, let's, let's take it that way. Okay, let's, I accept that. Okay, for, oh, you for, do? no, 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 for your argument that you are giving. Okay, fine. Then why do you do kulbani? No, because it's, it's mandated. But what I'm saying is, roles, even God has a reason for anything. I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying, even if I couldn't do it for whatever reason, I believe God can still forgive my sins without the bloodshed. So let's say I couldn't afford it. Okay. Let's the, say I couldn't afford a lamb to slaughter. That's it, fine. For that's, I sake, got your point. I believe God can still forgive my it, sins. I got it. I got it. Let me now. Let me say this. Would God be just if he if there was no punishment for death? I mean, for sin, sorry, uh, misspoke. If there was no punishment for sin, would that make God just? Because in the in the, the God of Quran, yeah, doesn't give a, any care about sin at all. It's like no consequence at all. I can forgive sin. I like that. That's but, it. But, but, because I want to forgive it, I forgive it. But, what happens to Allah's justice where He has to like punish sin? He's saying, I'm not going to punish sin, I'm going to just forgive it. Now, if he was, let me let me add one more thing. This is a very yeah, important on. point. Because yeah. I have always wanted to say this to the Muslims. If Allah was all forgiving, and yeah. that's all his main characteristic, why didn't he forgive Adam? He did. By kicking him out of uh, heaven? He did. He hold did on. forgive him. It was God's purpose to place Adam in the garden Iblis. so as to or teach him a lesson. God uh, te uh, te teach Adam a lesson of forgiveness so, uh, as well as the, the devil is your right, enemy right. so when he comes to you Nas, please you should I, turn I back it. to God in okay, repentance but the, do you understand that but God was going to place Adam as a viceroy okay or Nas, custodian upon the earth Nas, I'm gonna ask you one question when uh, uh, Adam was created was he created a mortal or was he created immortal he's created mortal a human being not no, no, immortal no. So, okay. so you mean like in terms of like to live forever? Yeah. So there's life after death, but, no, no, no. but okay. on, in this life, Adam was created not to live forever. Not in this life. No. Before he committed the because sin. Because he would have children. Yeah. Before he committed sin, mm -hmm. right? In Jannah. Mm -hmm. Was he mortal or immortal? He was mortal. He's human. So he, he was going to die. Because if Adam was to have all of his children, that was ever gonna come until the day of judgment, this earth wouldn't be enough. Well, so no, there has no, to no, be because, death okay, did for, Adam, the, for okay, life let me ask to you progress. Another question. Before yeah. he committed the sin, did Adam have children? No. No. No, he was, he was, he was, you're refuting him, by the way, when you say no, that. No, before, before, say that, before, when he was let me before, ask you a before the fall. Did before he have any? the sin of Adam, did he have children? No, it's just Not Adam as and far Eve. as we know, yeah, no. Fine. Fine. Mm. Why didn't he have children before he committed the sin? I don't know that. Do you know that? Well, know. well, he placed them in the garden so as to prepare them for, for life on this world. Now, I'm going to ask the question again. Yeah. Adam, God, Adam God, God says in the Quran. How long was Adam before he committed the sin? Let me ask you this. How long did he stay in, the, in heaven? Before he committed the sin, was it let's say was it's, it a it's day a or two non days? Non-salvific type question. No, no, no. I'm so just, it's not important for our salvation right. to well, know no, it is how no, old I was Adam connected. or how I'll long. Make, I'll tell you why this is important. It, it's because, interesting, but um, but no, no, no. But, but it doesn't make a difference to someone's salvation. Naz, Naz, it does. If you see what I'm talking about, it okay. will make a whole lot of difference because Adam.
could did not only you do not have children. You know why? Why do angels not have children? Do you know that? Uh, do you know why angels don't have children? No. Do you know that? I'll tell you why. And this in the Bible. Doesn't Genesis says they did have children? Uh, children? No. Uh, no. In Genesis uh, chapter no. six. No. Where they find the daughters oh, the, the, the of men fallen to angels. be. I'm not talking about the fallen angels. Oh, I'm okay. talking about the angels in heaven. Okay, but those were from heaven. Those they came angels. down to earth and made it with the women. Yeah. That's a different story. So don't go and get confused with that story. I'm okay. not asking you about the fallen angels. I'm talking about the angels in heaven. Okay. Do they have children? And if not, why not? Uh, I don't know, Islamically, uh, but in terms of anyway, biblically, you can use anything. it seems you can that use Bible, it's possible. You can use general knowledge, whatever you want to do. What's the point you're going to make? I'm going to make the point. You don't know. Just say it. Oh, I don't know. Okay, thank you. The Bible tells us angels in heaven, they don't need to re uh, procreate because they live forever. When you are immortal, you don't need to You don't believe that uh, angels live forever. Sorry, angels die? Eventually, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, is I that what you believe? No, no, no. I didn't know that Islam From an Islamic believes... point of view, the, uh, the world ends, oh, oh, the yeah. angels end. Angels die. End, oh, yeah. And then God... Don't you believe in the new heaven, new earth? Yeah, but so in the future, to, yeah, but the angels God of God will destroy come to God. the heavens, yeah, okay, which but, includes the angels. But do the, yeah. they cease to uh, do exist? Do you know what the heaven means? Okay, the earth in a new, new, new heaven, no, no, new earth. Is, because you guys are excellent guys to talk to, because I've had Muslim discussion. You know that I love this discussion, by the way, mm -hmm. and it's great. And uh, you know, I've talked to Idris before. I respect you, and I respect you. So you too. Thank you. Um, Sorry, the angels, angels, the angels dying. Yeah. Um, where did you get that? Sorry, I hadith. think hadith. When Allah okay. goes up, oh, yeah, no, no, the, the new world coming, oh, okay. right? Okay, so the new heaven coming, it comes with, uh, 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 like Jesus or Isa comes with the uh, uh, angels of heaven. So if he's coming with the angels of heaven, they're not dying according to your belief. Yeah, that's beautiful. No, no. Okay, so what's the purpose of angels then? To serve God. Okay, so why would they die? No, because I think there's a, there's a point in time, there's a thief and Allah says he rose up the earth. So when, when the end of the world happens, he rose, he, 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 everything dies. A, okay, fine. Everything dies on it, earth because it's the a, it's a end of the world as in earth, not of the universe. The universe and heavens don't end. Earth ends, a new heaven. And, and now let me tell you what heaven is because you said a new heaven, right? There are three heavens in the in Bible. I don't know. Uh, the, seven, the, seven in, 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 in Quran. You mean but, but, Gen okay. the Genesis creation? And then what the, are the, the new heavens, heavens in, in, in Christianity? You mean like in Revelation? No, there's the heaven, there are the birds fly. Okay. Okay. And then there is the space, which is the heaven. This is talking about the heavens and earth will go away, my word. Will. So this earth and this universe will go away. But then there's one beyond this two realms, which is this earth, atmosphere, and space. The third heaven is beyond space. That's okay. where God is. Okay. All right. So let's get that clear. So when the Bible says, you know, the heavens and uh, you know will go away and this and that, it doesn't have anything to do with angels because they're not in this universe. I mean, in this earth or in space, they are with God in heaven, and they cannot die because God. But God's not in heaven. Where is He? Because even the Bible says, like in First Kings chapter eight, verse twenty. Seven or twenty-two. What, what does it say? Basically, says um, the heavens and the earth cannot contain God, much less a temple built by men. Of course. So, so God, so heaven cannot contain God, because heaven's created. God created so, heaven. So, we also have so you can ask, where was God before He created the heaven? Right. So, are you so, saying there's no God in heaven? God doesn't exist in place. He created place for create for the angels. Okay. Or where for do the creatures. angels exist? Do the angels exist? Yeah. Where the, are the, they? the creatures. Do they serve serve God? Yeah. Where do they serve God? In this world, or in space, or in heaven? Both. Huh? Yeah. Both. Okay. So where where do the angels exist? Do they exist on earth, or do they exist in heaven? Both. Both. Yeah. Okay. Both. All right. So the angels in the like, earth will only... die, or the angels in earth and heaven will die at the end of, according to your faith. All, all creatures, or all creation. Die. And if I remember correctly, the Bible will confirm Allah is above the seven heavens. He's on his arch. He's above. beyond he's space the, and time. Throne, yeah. he, he's above. Oh, he's beyond space and time. Okay. Yeah. Well, but that's here's an Islamic belief. He's transcendent. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, it's that, even that, biblically, yeah, biblical right. as well. So if what what okay so so then let's go back to the question of angels procreation. Do they procreate? No. 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 Why not? 
because the answer from our side, because the Bible is that they are immortal. They don't need to reproduce. Man would not have to. That's why Adam did not reproduce because he was living forever. Once he committed sin, because in the Bible explains very clearly that uh, Eve had, would now have pains of birth because before she didn't have to do it because there was no pro, uh, there was no procreation before this. But now you're going to have to go through this route, and in this route you're going to have to die before you didn't have to die. So the the when, so when they say what oh, why you Christians talk about original sin? If you take the word original sin and replace that word with the word death you would understand the meaning because in Bible death came to everything because of Adam's sin not just man but to plants and to animals because animals and plants did not die before Adam uh, uh, committed that sin because of one man's sin death came to everyone and then because of one man's obedience which is Jesus Christ life came to everyone did, That's the did not the Adam made to. plants and animals prior to the fall Sorry? as food. Sorry? So it's, didn't Adam have food prior to the fall, like he ate? Yeah, yeah, he ate, right. So he would have eaten like vegetation, fruits, so right. that would so have been killed. So in a glorified body, okay, okay, now Jesus ate too. Remember he came back as a resurrected Jesus and yeah. he ate. With a heavenly in body, his, yeah. In his heavenly body. Okay, so yeah, in the heavenly body yeah. these things are there, but they're not they don't die jesus that heavenly body yeah. is, is so the fish that jesus body. ate would have been dead exactly bro that's so the like point. with it's adam if he ate and fish I've, the fish would have been dead this is the first time i've gotten that far in a discussion with the muslims yeah yeah cool. I've never so would have death that have far. already been this before. is like the first for me i'm very happy so this is the whole thing so about animals and plants died then yeah huh? For food, so animals and plants Adam ate food, so this would have been before the fall. Yeah, so they ate and everything. But so that so death was already before yeah. the fall. Yeah, but we weren't there, so that's it not. It didn't like come into but existence. But what it says is that there was, no there was no death. Okay, Paul says that, but in Genesis, uh, you can make. The, uh, well, 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 did animals die in heaven? Well, Adam ate food, so there would have been death prior to no, not really. I him mean, eating. Food. You can say make that argument, but uh, it's it, not. It's not like he's eating a live fish. Right. The fish would have been first killed. Right, but maybe he then, was eating something that was uh, not alive. How's that? Or even are, are yeah, animals. Like are, if you eat a fruit, a mango, does that mean the tree is going to die? Because you ate the mango? No, but the the the, the, the mango is like. Um, oh come on, man! I'm not going to get. That's a little bit petty. I, I don't know if you guys really want to go there. That, after, after, after the fall, after, after the fall, the animals fall, yeah. you eat flesh. After the fall, before, that, okay. before the fall, they were vegetarian. It was all vegetarian. Uh, Even the wild animals they were like veg vegetarian. Here's the, here's the very. I don't want to keep going on and on. Okay, I just want to conclude this now. Say to Adam, this this animals will be food for you. All right. Let me just conclude because it's getting a little bit. Unless you guys have any more questions, I'm willing to answer. But I just want to conclude this. And I'm very glad that I was able to explain the whole philosophy because the Bible, all the sacrifice, everything started from Genesis, from the... When he committed the sin, God sacrificed what? A lamb and gave the skin of the lamb as covering of their sin. Death came from... Not sin, but the nakedness. Because they but have become aware. Now, please, matured. I can't expect yeah. you to make this talk because you're smart. You know they were naked. Did they know before the sin they were naked? They were innocent. They were exactly, like, like a child. Two, you yeah. take a two-year-old and let them run around naked. Genesis he has no is idea. not Bible. Oh, Genesis is not Bible. Bible. It's Torah. So uh, Christian nice, nice. copied lies from Torah, put Adam it in the Bible. And, and Eve, they were the first sin they committed. God had to sacrifice an animal and which was a lamb because it starts right from the beginning God is saying the lamb of God is going to cover your sins here is the tunic and stuff wear it to cover your sin now that sin wasn't there until they disobeyed but and they were naked before could have but been they were a not dinosaur. naked in their eyes because there was no sin in their eyes do you understand? Because they they're innocent, like a child. It right? doesn't say lamb or not remember right? Because he's innocent. Uh, so that innocence was taken from them by their sin. Yeah, I know when they sin, they realize they're, they're their innocence is gone. Now they can see them naked. And they're, they're ashamed. They that shame is original sin. That <laughs> shame is death. You're wearing clothes because of that. All right, bro.
it was nice talking to you. Do you believe guys. the dinosaurs were before or Thank you after for listening. Adam? Sorry? The dinosaur did they come after Adam? Oh, please don't go before? there. Right okay, thank you, sir. You're spreading lies because of death. You're spreading lies. You guys. Okay, you I have the truth. I, I, you have the lie. All I want to do is make sure you guys understand where yeah. we come from because there's a lot of misconception. I am a liar. You are a liar. About, uh, hang on, boss. Let me speak. Hang on. About uh, the original oh, sin and why do you have to have blood for sacrifice? Because you had to have blood from the beginning, from the Garden of Eden. You had to have kill an animal to get the skin onto your covering because they were covering with the leaves and the sun came out and the leaves are gone. That animal could have been a dinosaur no, which no, no. God used in no, order to create story. clothes. Class, we will have another talk okay. about dinosaurs. Sir, sir, can, I, say can I ask you another yeah. question? Yeah. 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 Maybe you're not, the, maybe you're not the, the person to ask this. But you see the Jews, the Jews, some of the Jews, like the Orthodox ones, they don't accept Jesus died for their sins. They don't they don't slaughter anything in their temples now. No, because in their temple is gone. Of sins. Yeah. So to ask them that question, and that is what a big problem for them. Do you know that? Do you know no, that? No, but they, they they still go to their synagogues and they still pray. Yeah, but and they are supposed to. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to do sacrifice in the synagogue. Why don't they do that? Ask them. Ask them, bro. I'm, I've asked them. So they what did they say? What was their response? The guy that I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the one that you know, I'm, I'm not like this. I'm like that. You ask, do me a favor. I'll be, I'll stand next to you like we did now. We'll go to a Jew, one of those guys that are uh, what do you call orthodox, and we'll ask him this question: Why aren't you doing sacrifice as you are mandated to do for the forgiveness of your sins? Mm -hmm. yeah, ask him that question. So don't ask me that because I know they're not doing it, and that's wrong. Well, I know they don't do it, but I'm just speaking as to why. No, but I've asked them, and they, they, they're, 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 they're still, they would say that they're, they're under the old law. They still, they still follow the the. the the understanding of the old law. Yeah. If you want to talk slaughter. about the Jews, it's very clear. Jesus said that, you know, this temple, not a stone will be left on this temple. That's what he said, and that's what happened in 70 AD. Because he said, this whole thing is finished because I have come. Do you understand? The whole Bible, the Old Testament, is about the coming of this Messiah who's going to save the world. Now, how is he going to save the world? He's not, he's not going, he's going to save you from your sin. All the sinners will be saved through him. And there will be a new kingdom. A new kingdom is Jesus' kingdom, which is that's not lie. So war that is the world will be destroyed by nuclear right, guys, weapons. Nuclear weapons will destroy the world. Or, or should we end it here? When Jesus comes back, there will be nothing left. No, no, not for forgiveness of sins or anything. If we want to have the meat, you can uh, eat meat. That's fine. But not for forgiveness. No, you what? cannot sacrifice. Because that they have the ultimate sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin through Jesus. That is what Jesus' whole story is, is this ultimate sacrifice. There's no need for sacrifice for Christians. So when the temple was still there, what? <coughs> when the temple was still there before 70 AD, could they still sacrifice? I, they were doing it as Jews, not as Christians. No, but the Christians. And you copied no. Jews. The and who they were doing Bible. their sacrifice? They were continuing and not following. There were some Jews. Jewish Christians. Okay, so there were some Jewish Christians and there were some Jews Jews. There were non-Christian Jews, okay? So the Jews Jews would have done that. Now the Christian Jews, they, okay, so it was a transition period. So then God would, you know, they would have, this is a transition, right? Because they're not transitioning from Judaism to Christianity, right? So for the first 10, 20 years of Christianity, a lot of Jews would ask questions and they're like circumcision. As a Christian, do you have to do circumcision? And this was a big debate in the New Testament. And they said, no, that covenant was for the Jews. Then now the circumcision is of your heart. It, your... it was for Abraham, not the Jews. So it was from so Abraham. You Christians have no knowledge of what you're talking. Sorry, say that again. Do Jewish Christians need to be circumcised? Jewish Christians, if you're a Jew, you fall, okay, it's not a sin to have circumcision, okay? So there's no prohibition in Christianity about circumcision. There are a lot of Christians that I am circumcised. A lot of Christians are circumcised. So there's not a, it's not a mandatory to be circumcised. It's not like a, a, a sin not to or, or to do. It's either way, it's not. It's not mandatory because what is mandatory is a, a circumcision of heart, meaning your circumcision is also a kind of sacrifice. You don't understand the concept of it. It's a sacrifice. Let me tell you. Sorry, what it is. 
I mean, I'm just trying to correct it because when you circumcise your heart, you're controlling your heart. That's lie. That's circumcision. That of is heart. lie. Okay. You tell so lies. That is what God is looking for: is that you're going to circumcise all your desires for God. That is the circumcision of heart that Jesus is talking about. And he said the circumcision of the body is like it, it was a sign for the. You know, okay. God took uh, Jews from people who didn't know God at all to teach. Like you take a child, you cannot put him in a university. You have to send him to kindergarten, then you have to send him to high school and in college, and then you go to you university. You make lies. Right? You so tell God lies. Took these people to bring you his, tell lies. his you message lies. to the world. But these You're people liar. were not like in one day God went and then they knew everything about God and they were like, okay, we are holy. No, it took a long time for them to fall down, get up, God, they do this, do that, they fall down, they do this, God is like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> disciplining them. So he's not all loving. No, he, he, okay. he, he said if you have a child and you don't use the stick, yes. you're not a good parent. Okay. So yeah. so some Christian Jews <coughs> did sacrifice and did circumcise. Some Christian Jews did so sacrifice. Ethically Jewish, but embraced Christ. Yeah. Christian Jews. There was a t transitional period. I don't know what they did, bro. You're asking a question that is not, like he said, salvic, uh, salvation question, and ah. it doesn't ma matter. Because if you did, like I said, okay, now no, let me answer that more precisely. I'll answer it. If I'm a Christian and I want to do a sacrifice, it's something that's unnecessary. So why, would, it? But why would they do it? They wouldn't. Yeah, but if they, they did, know. why would they do it? Who, the Jews or the Christians? Christian Jews. No, Christian Jews. There is no Christian Jew. What are you talking about? Christian Jewish Jews? people who converted to a Christianity, Christian. they should not be sacrificing anymore. Why? Because that's a Jewish religion. Are they Jews? They should be sacrificed. No, they're if Jewish they're, Christians. They, then there's no mandate for them to sacrifice. But what if they did? They can't. Okay. They to can't. Why? Let me answer that. Okay. They can't because to become Christian is to accept the ultimate sacrifice. Which is Jesus. Which is Jesus. Which nullifies the animal sacrifice. Thank you. But what, You're if, smart, man. But what if there were Jews, huh? Jewish Christians, yeah. who did sacrifice? I don't know any Jewish Christians Paul. who did sacrifice. Huh? Paul. Oh, okay, Paul. There was a, a time when, okay, now you're talking it's about the transition. Now. Okay, now, let me answer that. There was a transition period. There were there was a confusion going around. Oh, I'm uh, you know yeah. the Jews were under the impression in order to follow Jesus you have to first follow Judaism to the T, meaning the laws. Do the, the do laws. the circumcision? Yeah, the laws meaning you have to circumcise. Even if, if you were a Greek, let's say, or a Roman, and you listen to Paul and you say, okay, I think I'm going to accept Jesus. Can so you wait, 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 wait. Before you accept yes, Jesus. So. First, you have to go and fulfill the law, and by the way, go and get that thing cut. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not going to be a Jew. I mean, a Christian. Okay. okay, that was what was going on. So there was a transition period where people were doing half Jewish and half. This what stuff. people did that? The, Jew, the, the, the Jews that were converting to Christianity. Uh, Who were they? The, the oh. Jews, the Israelites. Did any of the disciples do it? Well, like you said, you know, Paul did it, right? Okay, Paul did it. If you read that passage. And I, and I don't remember that no problem. is in the context of uh, he was preaching to the Jews, right? Both. Both, okay. Gentile and Jewish. Right. And what does he say about the, the sacrifice? I'm, and I'm not very familiar with this passage, so excuse me on that. Do you want to pull up that passage? Yes, in Acts chapter 21. Okay, let's read Verses that. 21 okay. to yeah, 26. Um, Paul um, makes his final visit to Jerusalem. Yeah. Um, and he tells them that there's ma many people have become Christian um, and then James tells him that look how many Jews we have now believed and they're all zealous for the law and they have been informed that you teach Jews living among Gentiles to forsake Moses and not to circumcise their children so they say to Paul um, take these men who have undergone a, a vow um, yeah. um, so let's read it. in this way people would know that there's no truth in these reports about you but that you yourself live under the law of Moses and so the next day Paul pays for the expenses of the men to have the head shaved and he goes into the temple and makes a sacrifice okay let's, let's read that oh, okay so um, Acts chapter 21 uh, verse 21 
Um, the, right, well, can we start the polemics or of okay, Paul so, and James in Jerusalem after um, these days? Okay, so verse 15, after these days, we made preparation for our journey. Mm -hmm. um, they, were, they went up to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Some of the disciples uh, from Caesarea mm -hmm. came along to lead us to the house of Manson, mm -hmm. Crypto, a disciple of long standing mm -hmm. with whom we were to stay. When we reached Jerusalem, the brothers welcomed us warmly. Um, the Jerusalem Christians. Mm -hmm. The next day, Paul um, accompanied us on a visit to James, uh, James, the brother of Jesus, mm -hmm. and all the the presbyters, meaning the elders, were present, and he greeted them. Then proceeded to tell them in detail what God had ac accomplished among the Gentiles through his ministry. Mm -hmm. They praised God when they heard it, mm -hmm. but said to him, "Brother, you see how many thousands of believers." They are from among the Jews, mm. and they are all zealous observers of the law. Mm. They have been informed that you are teaching all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to abandon Moses, mm -hmm. and that you are telling them not to circumcise their children or to observe the customary practices. Mm. What is to be done? Mm. Um, they will surely hear that you have arrived. So do what we tell you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Mm. Take these men and purify yourself with them and pay their expenses that they may have their heads shaved. Mm. In this way, everyone will know that there is nothing to report, mm. um, that there is nothing to the reports they have been given about you, but that you yourself live in observance of the law. Mm. As for the Gentiles who have come to believe, we sent them our decision that they abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meat of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. And so Paul took the men on the next day after purifying himself together with and entered and gave notice of the day when purification was completed and the offering was made for each of them. Okay. So here they're making animal uh -huh. sacrifice exactly. to complete and, the and vow that they have underway. Now, does it say anything about Gentiles in there? Yeah, they don't have to abide by certain things. Yeah, as for the Gentiles uh, who have come to believe, certain other stuff. Um, they should abstain from meat sacrificed to an idol, All right. from blood. Well, the Gentiles believers? Yeah, Christians. Yeah. Thank you. So your answer is right in that passage, and I'm glad you read, thank you for reading that. It's mm -hmm. very nice. The answer is in the passage. He is talking to Jews who are zealots about keeping Judaism intact. And boy, hold on, hold That's on. That's not the question. The question is why did Paul sacrifice? Because I asked you, do Christians. Jewish Christians need to sacrifice? You now said, Idris. Hold on, you said they don't. I goes, well, what if they did? You said it's not obligatory. No problem, it's not obligatory. But then you said that the sacrifice was Jesus' death yeah, and yeah, resurrection, okay, right, right, right. which abrogated, yeah. abstained yeah. from the animal sacrifice. Right. But yet, he is sacrificing but yet, here. But yet James, the head, the head of the Council of Jerusalem, along with Peter, who was going to be the rock, the head of the Roman church. No, no, that's that's has, your your has, your. Has, think there's no hold historical on. evidence of hold that. On, by hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on. Oh, he's not because it's Catholic. Because it's Catholic the church. That's, Peter and Rome. I don't care who's. Peter and Rome. Is, is that in the Bible? Is that we take exception? Is to? that in the Bible? I withdraw that. No thank problem. You, thank well, you. What my point is, James. Oh, it's fine. James. Sorry, carry on. And um, and Peter. Sorry, James advises Paul yeah. to conduct those rituals. And and then Paul conducted the ritual. Uh, you don't have to repeat the whole story because I've I've just gone through so it. So that's the question. So so the oh, question sorry. is that okay. Let me just reiterate it so you don't think that I'm misquoting or misunderstanding the question. Paul is doing this sacrificial ritual which is not uh, um, Christian according to, because of your understanding that if Christ has paid for the sin there is no need for blood sacrifice therefore why would Paul be doing the sacrifice is that okay for me to, okay thank you so I'm not misunderstanding or misquoting anything thank you in the same passage we read about the Gentiles I'm very, uh, that's why it's really good to read the passage because the Bible will answer itself. The Gentiles were exempt from all of these rituals, including sacrifice, including uh, uh, circumcision and everything, because they're Gentiles. Now, if there were Jews that were doing it, 
he would allow them to do it. Because that's what I was saying, there was a transition period where a lot of Jews were continuing to follow the Jewish rituals and then accepting God. For Jews to accept Jesus was to accept him as the Messiah. Okay? It takes a while for them to understand what that really means because to them, Messiah meant the Savior and they thought that, you know, this. And that. but when he preached to them, that was the thing, but they still didn't want to go. You, you see, you're Muslims. You don't want to give up Islam. No matter how much we tell you, you don't. Does the it? Jews are like that too. They listen to him, they accept it, but they still continue to follow both things. They want to be like, fulfill the law and they want to accept Jesus as their Savior. That's the thing. So that whole passage, Paul is saying, okay, as Jews, these four guys, let them do this. Okay, fine. But those, so these Gentiles, they don't need to do anything. That's the answer. Well, the passage is to refute the idea that Paul is teaching Jews not to forsake or abandon the law of Moses. Whereas Paul says so in his own words, in his letter to the Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20, uh, to the Jews, I become like one under the law, even though I don't reg regard myself as being under the law. But uh, he said I, do, I don't regard myself as being under the law. Yeah, in First wow. Corinthians chapter nine, verse yeah. twenty. All right. That is um, a very big statement. So, so, does so, he equate it to a man divorcing his wife? Right. Oh, I don't know. What did he equate it to when divorcing his wife? Tell see, me the that. Law, no? Yeah. Okay. The you law. See, okay. All right. Am I right? I think so. I'm yeah. not, so it's, it's, it's to mind. the Jews, I've become yeah. as a yeah, Jew yeah, yeah, yeah. in and order to win Jews, and to those under the law, uh -huh. I've become as one under the law, though not, not being myself under the, under the law, law, that I might win those under the, under law. the law. That I might win those under the law. Now, Whereas in Acts chapter 21, yeah. uh, verse 24, yeah. um, he sa um, J James says to Paul, um, take these men and purify yourself so that they may have the head shaved, and that's all will know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself also live in observance of the law. Yeah. Now, the law... So Paul does applicable. one thing, but he says something else. Right. The law was still applicable according to the... Okay. There are certain things that God will allow. Okay. And there are certain things... Okay. There are certain things that God allows for a period of time, like divorce. Like in the Old Testament, they came to Jesus and asked him about divorce. And Jesus, divorce, do you know what Jesus said about it, right? That to them, in the old days, because of the hardness of your heart, God allowed you to divorce. But I say to you, whoever leaves a woman except for sexual immorality is committing adultery. What does that mean? That means that he's doing stuff that in the old days, so God would allow you to do something yeah. because of the hardness of your heart or because you're a Jew and you want to do all this stuff because to you, this is like the law and you grew up with this. Like Muslims, you know, they grew up with something. No, we have to do that because that's what it is. So Jews were like that. They grew up with the law, so they wanted to follow the law to the T. And he said, okay, for you, that's fine. He doesn't want to, the, in the Bible, it's, there's a concept that don't do things that will be a stumbling block to your brother. If he doesn't eat meat, then don't eat meat in front of him. Okay? So the don't, do you see what I'm saying? That's how the philosophy of the New Testament is. It's like, don't become a stumbling block for somebody. If he wants to follow his religion, his, his Jewishness, and to the T, let him do it. As long as he follows Jesus. That's what he's saying, that I might win some to Christ. So he's winning the souls. Because it'll take, like I said, it'll so, so take them time. Does that fall in line even with the Sabbath? So if they was doing the Sabbath before, even though they've accepted Jesus, should they still keep the Sabbath day holy? Or animal sacrifices at the temple, if they were doing that before they were Christian and now they become, can they still continue to make animal sacrifices? Okay, the, was Paul saying, I do not, I'm not under the law, right? Because yeah. he himself is not. But there are people around him, if he goes out, like Jew, Muslims will say, why didn't Jesus say I'm God? Because he's not, he's not that dumb. That if I, if some, a man comes to you and say, I'm God, what? What he did was one step further. He proved that he's God by doing stuff that only God can do. Like healing people, like giving sight to the blind. That's what Jesus was like that. He wouldn't, because if he said that, that would be a stupid statement. Well, because if anybody who says, well. I'm God, you send them to the, to the mental institute because you're mentally not, 
there. Yeah. We're starting to get a little bit off topic. What, what I'm saying is that if they, if they, if they, if they, if they, well. if they was following the Sabbath before and they wanted to follow the Sabbath now, right. would that still be Guys, applicable? I'm so sorry. It's getting a little bit like. It's like 7 30. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've been here for, if you want to speak like, next week, or weekend, another yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, this was a lovely conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I enjoyed man, it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for being respectful. You, yeah. so, appreciate course, it. And thank you Good for being this too, yeah. uh, You are respectful always. Nah. He's respectful, but it's hard <laughs> well, to find because you. you didn't get any hecklers. And my brother here has been very patient. Alhamdulillah. This is a great thing. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Talk to you next time. Okay, nice. See you soon. So, you believe. You said mm -hmm. he's teaching the Jews one thing, yeah. And in the book, they're saying he does the opposite to what he you're preaches. teaching them this to yeah. show them you haven't taught this, yeah. Go and do, thank you, brother. Go and do the Nazarite vow, yeah. Sure, we okay. Maybe speak to but, uh, that, but then he goes on, yeah, even afterwards to say to carry on as he did before the Nazarite vow mm -hmm. to continue preaching it. So mm -hmm. he preached it. Then so-called recanted, supposedly recanted it yeah, to the Jerusalem, the Council of Jerusalem, and then went on to preach it. Mm -hmm. this, so, this, like he said, Jew to Jew, Gentile to Gentile. Yeah. yeah. This is where he says, so he's "I'll be all things to all men." Yeah. yeah so, so basically, he what he's saying is, "I'm going to lie through my teeth to you just to get you to do what yeah. I want you to do." Well, yeah. Well, that's that's yeah. what that's what it is. He, he has rubbish well, about. Um, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the thing is, he has good out. intent. Like he wants to try to save, save as much as people as he can. But the problem is, these were already believers. They already believed in Jesus, so they don't need to be saved. Most they're already them, yes. saved. They, they were, they were. But, but they, uh, they're what they saved. call messianic Jews. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They weren't Christian Jews. They were messianic yeah. Jews. So they actually believed that Jesus it, is the Messiah. Yeah, th that he was the Messiah. But yeah. they didn't believe what they believe about him being the Son of God and yeah. all that kind of lovely stuff. They, they. They are what Muslims consider Ahl al-Kitab. They were the originals. The people of the book. The yeah. of the so, book. let's read this again. Acts 21, 20. Zahla Kuhn for helping me with that. Because yeah, I wasn't too that's sure. Because we were talking originally not, about uh, yeah. the Kabani and all that. So we yeah. said, listen to me with anyone. that Nobody wants to talk to me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you go to them, they'll speak to you. The I thing said, is, if you, to if remember you, is But what I'm saying many... to them is, if you speak to any Muslim, they'll, they'll answer you. He say, no, no, as soon as they see me, they're going to not want to talk to me. And I said, all right, cool, I'll, I'll ask the brother and if you will we'll well, get a better this understanding. This is the first time me and Sam have had a decent conversation. Yeah. Uh, we've not really spoken before, so yeah. it's nice to have. Yeah. So no, Acts 2119, yeah. Paul greeted them and reported in detail, as you said, what God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. Yeah. Okay. When they heard this, they praised God. Then they said to Paul, "See, you see, brother, how many thousands of Jews have believed, exactly. and all of them are zealous for the law. They have been informed that you teach all Jews who live amongst the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or live according to the customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear that you have come. Exactly. Because what yeah. happens? And these are believers. The Christian. Jews mob him at the temple and at yeah. the temple okay, I'm spin, yeah. Michael. Oh, yeah. and a Roman Sorry. centurion Sorry. what's the name? Zachariah Zachariah yeah. okay. Sorry. the Jews mob him and then Paul has to tell a Roman centurion he is what? a Roman citizen mm -hmm. so he protects him and he takes him in the protection oh, okay. because yeah. the Jewish Christians heard as said here when they have heard this basically that he's teaching the Jews not to abide by the law mm -hmm. okay so he's teaching them this, okay? So in the Council of Jerusalem, let's say, to sh here we go. They have been informed that you teach all the Jews who live among the Gentiles to turn away from Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children to live, not, to live according to the customs. What shall we do? They will certainly hear you have come. So do what we tell you. The four men with us have made a vow. Take these men and do the Nazarite vow. Number one. Uh, so, um, uh, Abdullah, um, Allow it to still record because we're having that. Let, 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 let it record. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. So, so, um, so, yeah. So he goes to show them the people mm -hmm. who've heard you're, you're preaching to the Jews not to follow the law. Take the Nazarite vow. There's two issues with this. Number one, he's teaching something different than the other apostles, supposedly. Okay. Number two, the Jews of Jerusalem are angry because he, they've heard that he's teaching Jews in Gentile lands 
not to follow the law. And to show them this is the case, take the Nazarite vow. But then after, if you continue the reading the New Testament in Paul's writings, he reverts back to teaching not to follow the law. Mm. So he's been untruthful to James and Peter and others. So he switched right again. Now. Okay. That's, and that's the third, that's and the third, and the third point is this: as I asked him, there is still animal sacrifice after the supposed death mm. and resurrection of Christ. Yeah. It's still happening. So, so he, there's, there's a whirlwind of issues here. He's saying there's a transitional period between um, like, like Jesus departing and then the temple being destroyed. But the problem is that this is a salvific issue. Yeah. This is to do with the death and resurrection of Jesus. <laughs> that Jesus paid or died for your sins. Exactly. So if Jesus paid for your sins, this is a no, fundamental a belief. It makes no sense for there to be a tra transitional period. Either you believe or you don't believe you don't that believe. Jesus died for your sins. You're right, and there's, a, yeah. and there's another point. In the letter, that James asked them to write, mm -hmm. and he give and he takes it and he gives it to Peter, mm -hmm. Ju not Judas Iscariot, another Judas, and someone else, and they send it to the church in Antioch, mm -hmm. right? And they give the letters proof of what Peter and the other guys are saying is from James himself. Okay, yeah. and in that letter, what's the edict to the Gentiles? They don't need to um, circumcise. No problem. You don't need to circumcise. But it says, but, but. It says, but it says, you cannot eat of blood. That law is not changed. The interpretation of them not eating by blood yeah. is what? Kosher meat. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles still need to eat kosher. The friendship to clean lung. And they don't yeah. eat kosher because of what Paul yeah. said. All of the laws are abolished. So, so we'll give them circumcision, like he said. Mm -hmm. I, sh I don't have to be circumcised, but I am circumcised with the Gentiles. Yeah. But mate, you're not eating kosher meat. So you're still not abiding by what the disciples wrote in that letter to, to Antioch. So let's say you don't have to sacrifice, let's say you don't have to be circumcised, you still need to eat kosher. Mm -hmm. So that's another issue. Yeah. Okay.